Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be sharing the latest Bitcoin technical analysis, as I do here every day, as well as 102 million worth of shorts liquidated as Bitcoin price surpassed 72,000. We'll also be discussing the Bitcoin ETF, see a surprise. 200 million worth of outflows. Will the new 69,000 support hold? I'll be breaking it down for you, as well as Brad Garlinghouse predicts institutional money pushing the crypto market cap to $5 trillion this year in 2024. I'll be breaking down this latest report, as well as we only have roughly a week and a half left until Bitcoin halving 2024. Analysts are predicting a 160% increase of the Bitcoin price action, taking Bitcoin to 150,000 per coin. I'm also going to be sharing with you a more bullish prediction, uh, predicting we hit 300,000 for this particular cycle. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. Welcome, crypto fan. What it do? Good to see the fam in the building. Shout out, Devon. Appreciate you. You digging the thumbnail? Good. Eager for JV's inspirational outlook. Thank you, Bigfoot. And yo, we found Bigfoot. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Devon, good to see you. What up, Marty, Casey, Peter, Russia in the building. We survived the eclipse. That is right. Now on to the having. Cheers, Don George. Uh, the number on the crypto show on YouTube. Let's go smash the likes. You already know. Thank you, Crypto Surge. I uh, appreciate all the support each and every day, as always, family. What it do, it's a beautiful day. Uh, obviously, we pull back some, but yesterday we had a hell of a price bump. We jumped $3,000 on the daily, so not too shabby. But yeah, little consolidation. We have a halving in just a week and a half. Make some noise for that. Uh, welcome, McFootinator. Let's get it. And yes, you already know, some someone is having a hundred billion laugh with their pump and dumps every week. Yeah, who's laughing is the market makers. They're they're digging it. The vibes are positive. Uh, thank you, Marty. You already know. Pump, 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 pump it up. Pump it up, family. Pump the likes. It helps with the stream. Much appreciated. Shout out, Dirty. What it do, fam? Jay Sice. We got Jennifer in the building. Shout out to the mods. Always greatly appreciated. Respect. Welcome. Everyone joining us. This is live and interactive, so very important. Let me know at least where you're tuned in from. This fine Tuesday afternoon, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. Me likes the bitty coin. Who doesn't like the bitty coin? Just saying. Hey, relaxing. What up? Peter says pumping it up. Pump it up. Having coming soon to a theater near you. Nipsey's excited. He don't show it right now, but he is internally. Just saying. Look at him. He can't even sit still anymore. He's up and about. Hey, fam. Loud and clear in Chicago. Shout out Shaw City. James Elsie. Appreciate it, man. Ferrell Ferris Fox. Welcome to the stream. Anthony Zamet. Grayscale dumb 300 mil. Precisely. We're going to be discussing that dumpage. Liz Warren. What is that? Pontificating on her expansive knowledge of crypto during a hearing today. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hello. Not a Gene Genesis. I don't even know who that is. Hello from Bolivia. Shout out Ariel Mora. Bolivia in the building. Uh, hello, everyone. Norway. Shout out Bina. Appreciate you. Susie. Hey, JV. Greetings from LA. By way of, what is that? WV. You are the best, just like Bitcoin. Appreciate you, Susie. Uh, respect. Boston in the house. Shout out Crypto Colon. Uh, more Mo Bitcoin is the second best. Speaking about the second best, which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay, what's the second best? There is no second best. Shout out Lazarus, relaxing. K Jam in the building. Mars watching from San Diego. Welcome, Mars. I'm not saying I'm number one. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. Yes, you already know. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Don't be a stranger. Nipsey Candle incoming. Send it, Bigfoot. We need it. W stream. Welcome, Palestinian West Virginia. Oh, that's the WV. Thank you there, Susie. You already know, Bitmiss. What do we call the people who like to hoard fiat currency and treat it as a store of value? What do we call them, folks? But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets out of profit. Right? Not. Bob Marley says XRP. I got a prediction from Brad Garlinghouse today of the crypto market hitting five trillion. I'd say that's a very modest target for this year, but nonetheless, we'll be covering that as well. People, 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 people that use, that use, use fiat, 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 fiat
Good day, shipmate, says Greg. Welcome. Something very fishy going on with Grayscale. They are poor as what? Pretty much. As a store of store of store of store of value. What do we call them, folks? We call them poor. They sure as hell not honey badgers. They're not cyber hornets. What do we call them? Poor. We call them poor. Hey, poor people. <laughs> Classic. They will never understand. I believe we're going to get a strong Nipsey buy signal today. Surge is full of hope. I love the optimism. Peter, the gold man Schiff, will never be poor because his son owns Bitcoin. There's the kicker for you. But use, 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 fiat. What if his son doesn't share it with the father? Said, yo, father, I gave you, you know, 10 years uh, to buy some Bitcoin. I told you, I preached it to you every day. You made me feel stupid, pops, for holding this Bitcoin. Now the Bitcoin's worth millions. Your gold is worth nothing. Should I just give you some Bitcoin? What would you do? Currency. We call them poor. Leonard Ray, 401k equals a joke. Amen to that. Grayscale is the new fish species. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, we call them fiat holders, uh, precisely crypto surge. Uh, I think Andrew Tate refers to them as brokies. Fiat equals poor. We call them. We call them poor. poor, poor. We call them poor. Yep. That's according to the Michael Saylor, the Giga Chad, the $15 billion man. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Streamlabs. We do have a merch uh, store. I get asked that a lot. You'll see that link in the live chat. It's merch.cryptonewslerts. Dot net. Don't be shy. Support the merch. Support the channel. I appreciate it. Poor, poor. We call them poor, poor, poor. Brazil is aware about the crypto news. Oh, yeah. Some issues going down right now in Brazil, uh, interestingly enough. So you already know. Uh, I would imagine, is there local currency? Is it called the, what is it? The Brazilian real? Is that accurate? I would imagine their currency is losing value as well, like all the other nations around the world, especially down there in South America. Volatare, Circa, 1720, all, what is that, flat, always, you mean fiat. Fiat always eventually returns to its intrinsic value. This is facts, uh, Greg. All fiat does eventually return to its intrinsic, intrinsic value, which is zero. Facts, facts, facts. Uh, her fro win always like a something conquest, a Muscovy conquest. Okay, so it is the real there. What is the uh, conversion right now? Like, how many Brazilian real is one Bitcoin? I'm curious if you guys could let me know. Currently, 60 G's, baby. Speaking of 60 G's, you're right. 60 G's, baby. When are we going to have orange panty night? Back when we hit 72? It's red panty night when you're starting to fight me, yeah? Back at your back at home with your wife. Oh! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the Ten Sass Commandments. Good point. They had to call it the real because we all know it's not real. Go figure. That's the world we're living in. Everything's a psyop. Just saying. But anyways, fam, if you're new to the channel, be sure to smash the subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day just like this. Also important to smash that thumbs up, especially if you're gaining value out of today's show. It helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm. Let's kick it off with our market watches we do each and every day, seven days a week. We got Bitcoin correcting down 4% on the day after climbing $3,000 yesterday. We're currently sitting just above 69200 69000 seeming to be holding right now, which is a good sign. Strong support. We have Ether down almost 5%, trading at roughly 3500 AVAX, uh, one of the top losers. XRP, one of the only top coins actually in the green. And Ton is leading the pack up 9% on the day, while the majority of the alts are correcting and in the red. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. The current crypto market cap stands at $2.6 trillion with roughly $100 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance at 52.3% with the Ether dominance at 16.3% after bottoming out a few days ago at roughly 15.8%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers. For the past 24 hours, we've got Phantom, Tuncoin, and Pendle. Below that, Ave, Leo, Tau, and Theta. Just very modest gains as the majority of the alts are all correcting and in the red. But curious, question for you guys in the chat. Uh, which coins in particular are you most bullish on for this bull run? Holla. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get more of a visual perspective. Virtually, I'd say 97 to 95% of the alts are correcting and in the red right now. Even with is down 14%. Uh, percent. 
percent on the daily. But checking out the monthly, look at this. You do got some respectable gainers. Core up over 200 percent, ton 136 percent, and WIF up 59 percent. Zooming out on the annual. Everything is virtually crushing, including Bonk up almost 4,000%. Mind-boggling. Floki, 500%. And Pendle, almost 1,200%. Tau, almost 900%. Render, 500%. And Solana, 600 and 43%. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're currently rated in 80, back in extreme greed. Yesterday, 76, last week, a 79, and last month, a 79. In extreme greed, the reason we watch this particular metric, the higher this number goes, the more likely of a pullback. And we witnessed that a few weeks back when we hit 90, we corrected, like had a $10,000 correction on the daily. So we'll continue to monitor this. And checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown clock, we have 10 days left until the infamous Bitcoin halving scheduled to take place on 420, yo, April 20th. That's right. And checking out the time chain calendar, it shows you which block we're currently on. It's 838,500, which means we are only, what is that? Whoa, 1,500 blocks away until the halving. As soon as we hit block number 840,000, that's when the halving occurs. And the current estimated date, again, is 420. You can see you could currently convert $1 for 1,447 Satoshis. So there you have it. Where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to take us in the next week and a half? Leading up to the halving, holla, and I'll read as many of your comments out loud as I can. Bullish on FJB token. That's what's up, McFootinator. Hashtag FJB. Now, is that a real token? If so, kudos to them. XRP and Cardano says Mob Marley. Right on. ADA. It would never flop or lose market cap, says David Searle. Good afternoon, Juan Espino. Good to see you, family. 420, baby. You already know, Devon. Light it up. It's travel season. This is why gas prices are rising. What are the gas prices where you guys live? Uh, let me know. Here it's in liters, so it's a little confusing. Different system they use. Just liquidating the longs at 69,000. The big boys are playing for the big boy games. There you go, Thomas, looking for the big boy gains. It's always 420, says Joe. I second that. Heads up. Ripple Labs is entering a huge class action lawsuit against the U.S. federal court. Good for them. I wish them much success, Greg, against the SEC. I wish everyone success against these federal courts and SECs. You know what I mean? I use gas prices as an indicator on when to buy or hodl. It's a mirror of the economy. U.S. is petrol fiat economy, says Leonard. Checking in from the Mile High Country, Denver. Shout out Kelvin Watson. Appreciate you tuned in, fam. Don't forget to feed the bull for the run. Watch from Germany. Cheers, TM. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out, Germany. Uh, happy Tuesday, JV. Keep up the good work. You got it, Sammy G. Flat. What is that? Flat to slightly down to the halving, then to the moon. Senate, honest banker. <laughs> honest banker. Uh, 2.99. What is that, Furl? That the, the the gas per gallon where you're at and where you're living? Uh, Joseph, 515. Good Lord. $3.40 per gallon for Joe. And I guess it depends if it's regular or high test as well. So you got to let me know. Five seventy nine a gallon on a good day in North. Good Lord, that's a huge difference. It's double that of Virginia. And uh, wow, three dollars per gallon on leaded says Kelvin. Uh, how much a liter in Puerto Rico? Two dollars a liter in Australia. I'm pretty confident it's more. I don't know the exact number to be honest. I never look at the price. I would guess it's probably three dollars a liter or something like that. If I was to guess, three dollars and nineteen cents a gallon regular. Says so Serge. Hi from the UK. Good day, JV. Shout out Robbie P. This one's for you, Broski. I always got your sound clips lined up, bro. Hey, pay attention on how I break this Bitcoin slang down. Check it. A Bitcoin is a Let's go. $3.79 diesel. Good Lord. Explosion at the Mexican deep water oil rig is causing the oil spike. Good Lord. Crazy. $3.40 regular. What do I feed the bison? <laughs> Amazing how well Prude is hiding up considering the massive sales from Grayscale. You mean the price? That's right, Tony Smith. Shout out to the flat earthers. There you go. Shout out S. Dot, all the flat earthers. $3.50 a gallon in Albuquerque. Whoa. Uh, what is that? $2 in Germany. 
Haha, -ha, let's go. Blockchain is technology. Transactions take place on it constantly. A public key is your address. Premium? Good Lord. $5.49 in Reading. I got to take the premium as well. So I know all about that life. Always costs a little bit more at the pump. But it's not too bad when my car is on very low, like the lights on to fill it up. Cost me roughly 60 bucks. I do recall about a year ago, it was costing me like 80 to 90. So the gas prices have went down a little bit considering what it used to be uh, here when I fill up my car. That's the only gauge I know. Uh, 525 in Victoria, California. What are you talking about? Bounce dirty. I'm the one and only. <laughs> Anyways, fam, shout out McFootnator. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Pump the likes, pump the stream. But let's dive into today's Bitcoin TA. Check out some of the charts where we're likely to head next. As you can see here on the one hour chart, Bitcoin stayed indecisive after the April 9th Wall Street Open amid a warning that the macro data could spark further Bitcoin price downside. That's right. Trading view showed Bitcoin dipping below 69,000 as Wall Street returned. The bulls continue to lack momentum to reclaim further ground towards the current all-time high of 73,800. My question for y'all, when do you feel we eclipse the current all-time high? We hit, I think it was less than two weeks ago. We just recently hit it. But when do you feel we'll reclaim it, break it, and re-enter price discovery holla. Now, analyzing the order book data, material indicators drew attention to the whales attempting to draw the price lower in order to enter the fresh long positions. The target time frame it explained was the United States CPI print due for release. April 10th, which is officially tomorrow on Wednesday, quoting them here. We have seen this behavior frequently around economic reports. If Wednesday's core inflation numbers are hot, they'll likely be able to extend the downside move. However, what often happens in these scenarios is that whales long the dip and exploit the upside liquidity void they just created for relatively quick move up. Now, this chart shows you the nearest firm wall of bid liquidity situated at 66.5 on the largest exchange, Binance. Uh, quoting Rec Capital, Bitcoin is rejecting from this blue range high of 71.3 at the moment. And he also wrote, Bitcoin is thus sandwiched between the old all-time high of 69,000, which is support, and the highs from two weeks ago of 71.3, which is resistance. There is a scope for consolidation here going forward. Now, let's discuss the infamous GBTC outflows would continue to accumulate here. Uh, yeah, April 9th saw a net outflow of 200 million. That's today, driven mostly by uh, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust. This caught market observers off guard. Preliminary data, April 10th, saw the GBTC outflows only accelerating, heading into tomorrow. The number of crypto intelligence firm Arcam showed, uh, as Dan Crypto Trades put here, put them at around 6,200 BTC, which is 434 million, the largest tally in dollar term terms for several weeks. Definitely not a good look when there's so much offloading, and this is more than likely why the market is currently reacting how it is. Uh, so there you have it. And we'll dive even deeper into these short liquidations here in our next story of the day. But let me check out the chat. What's up, guys? Uh, Mob Marley, Dogecoin to the moon. <laughs> Call me the moon boy Marley. Uh, moon boy Marley in the house. Uh, R25, what is that? Uh, Rand. Oh, okay, that's their local currency in South Africa. $1.69 uh, a liter in the Philippines. Hey, sounds like some good prices out there, yo. Uh, GS dumped another $300 million in Bitcoin yesterday. Good Lord. No ETFs to scoop it up. $1.21 a liter here in Johnson, South Carolina. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. New all-time high Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Send it, Thomas. CPI tomorrow. Yeah, man, it's a coming. In the UK, premium costs 5% more, but it is 10% more efficient. There you go, mode. Uh, two for one. They can try to manipulate the price as they have been, but in the medium to long term, it changes nothing. Tell them. Producers price index, PPI, more like it. Salam family. Shout out Mohammed. What's good, fam? $4 a gallon in Chicago. That's a robbery in of itself. Insane. 300 people watching. Pump the likes. Pump the stream. Thank you, Devon, for the reminder. Greatly appreciated. Shout out to the Rumble fam as well. Much appreciated. 32,000 Bitcoin is still in play. I disagree. I don't think we're likely to go to the 30,000 range ever again. I think that is a pipe dream. But I also admit I'm just a YouTuber. I could be wrong. Uh, maybe Muhammad is right. Maybe we cracked the 32. I just don't see it happening. ICP to 5,000. Up dog. What is that? Hot dogs? Bitcoin to 300,000 for reels. Whoa. Are you saying one Bitcoin is 300,000 reels? Or are you just saying send Bitcoin to 300,000 for real for real? Matthew, shout out. 
<laughs> Not sure yet, says Matthew. Everyone goes to, or everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. That's right, Kelvin. Bitcoin is the apex predator. Calm down, kitties. Bitcoin has never hit an all-time high prior to the halving. Bitcoin has moved on average for 4,800%. Post halving, though, that is regressive. 96x, 48x, 8.8x. So even if Bitcoin does a mere 4.4x, I am cool, says Greg. Amen. How many of you are cool with a 4x? You know what I mean? What is that? About uh, 300,000 per Bitcoin? Send it. That's actually today's target. <laughs> uh, Democrat in Chicago take their cut of the petrol money. They cash it. Petty cash. Yeah, I'm not surprised there. In the words of uh, Nate Diaz. You know what I mean? You just shook up the world. How's that feel? Hey, I'm not surprised, mother... <laughs> 32, not possible unless a boatload of money goes out of Bitcoin, says Leonard. Uh, Bitcoin cash to 3000 after the, the halving. $6 a gallon in California. Man, prices are definitely under the influence. You can say that again. The math does not lie. Forex would be awesome. I think we'd all be happy with that. And that's pretty modest as well. 350,000 reels. Bitcoin in Brazil. Whoa. So it's 350,000 reels for one Bitcoin. Good Lord. I even think in Australia, it's now over 100,000 Australian dollars. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Robbie or anyone else in Australia. But yeah, it's no joke, this inflation. You know what I mean, I can't believe Mohammed keeps saying 32, says Serge. It is a new all time high prior to the having the cycle, is why I'm saying this is a super cycle super saiyan send it i'm cool with a 2x is dirty right 140,000 be pretty sexy but we're gonna surpass that i'm pretty confident half the miners would be mining after this having hardly gets talked about uh the whiz the whales from the last circle do not have the same power bitcoin to the moon talk to the miners they will explain why bitcoin literally can't be sold at 32 there you go marty hey jv you the boss always waiting for your stream thank you turbit Respect. Trini, you the man. Shout out, Trini. I appreciate it. Pump the likes, fam. Pump the stream. We'll continue with our next story of the day. Let's discuss 102 million in shorts liquidated as Bitcoin surpassed 72,000. I think we tapped 72,500 yesterday, and today we're currently correcting. But yeah, over 102 milli worth of leverage short positions were liquidated for the past 24 hours when Bitcoin was trading above 70,400. Is the breakout from Bitcoin's weekly price range confirmed? Let's discuss it. Following the April 8th, Eighth weekly high of 72.7 ish. Bitcoin price retraced to trade above 70,400 mark, falling a half a percent in the 24 hours leading up to 9.45 a.m., according to Coin Market Cap, as we can see here in the one day chart. Following Bitcoin's rise to the weekly high, over 102 million worth of leverage short positions were liquidated in the crypto market during the past 24 hours, with a total of 187 million worth of total liquidations, according to CoinGlass data. Now, the Bitcoin Bitcoin liquidations total 61.6 million with over 34 million in short positions and 27.7 million levered longs. The largest single liquidation order amounted to 4.49 million worth of Bitcoin on Binance, as we know is the world's largest exchange. Shout out to Leonard Ray. Appreciate you joining the HODL gang and supporting the channel family. However, 33 million worth of short Bitcoin liquidations is lower than the 38 million short liquidations April 2nd. Moreover, Bitcoin's sudden 5% drawdown on April 2nd, liquidated 165 million of leverage in less than two hours. Now, if Bitcoin's price rallies back to 73,000, over 507 million worth of these short leverage positions would be liquidated on Binance. Now, the cumulative short liquidations on Binance would reach 666 million, 666. Can you say Satan at 73,500? Traders should also watch the 73,000 level around the current all-time high, which now acts as significant resistance and a potential short liquidation zone for the Bitcoin price action. Now, following the liquidations, Bitcoin futures funding rate saw a healthy reset, falling to 0.0163% April 9th, almost three times lower than the previous day. However, this is still significantly lower than the three-week high of 0.07% on April 1st. Now, Bitcoin price has successfully retested the old all-time high of 69,000 and quoting wrecked, Bitcoin daily closed above the 69,000 level yesterday. And today, Bitcoin is enjoying good upside. Now, the Bitcoin latest price rally can mainly be attributed to the inflows from the Bitcoin ETFs and anticipation surrounding the upcoming Bitcoin halving scheduled to take place 
in roughly 10 days. Let's see if it actually occurs on 420. That'd be something. Uh, quoting uh, Greco right here, historically, Bitcoin having events have marked significant points followed by nine to 18 months of uptrend culminating in cycle peaks. So if historical patterns repeat, we may witness an uptrend for the remaining nine months of 2024, leading to a cycle peak expected between quarter four of this year and quarter two of 2025. And that's actually a good point. Do you think we'll hit the cycle peak uh, fourth quarter or sometime this year, 2024? Or do you think it'll most likely be sometime in 2025, such as quarter two, quarter one, quarter three, or quarter four? Holla. And let me know your thoughts. Longs pay shorts, shorts pay long, says Greg. Time to load and bong for a ripper. Hey, you do what you got to do there, guy. Private key is your access, cash is trash, but a Bitcoin is an asset. Woo! I was in the path of totally 2017 word. Bitcoin minus 3% on the daily chart. The buck stops here. Buck the Fed. Just saying. Hey, it's JV. Hey, it's Benny Avalis. Welcome, Benny. Appreciate you tuned into the live. Quarter 2, 2025. So, Stephen, let me know if you guys agree or disagree with that prediction. Can you see a peak in quarter two of next year? Let me know. When are we going to peak? Where are we going to be at? How many six figures will we see? 100 Gs, 200 Gs, three, four, 500 Gs. Let me know. That's a lot of 100 Gs. So let's go. Uh, welcome, y'all. Just joining the stream. Don't be shy. Let me know where you're tuned in from, family. This is live and interactive. Don't forget. Much appreciated, yo. I said empty your mind. Be formless. I think we'll hit the cycle peak around June of 2025. Right on, Jennifer. It's going up forever, Laura. Buck the Fed. JV, do a live bong rip. Hey, hey now. 2025 is the milestone. 470,000. Let's go. I dig it. Peak November 2024. Yo, just FYI, we take hits from the Hopium Bong each and every day on the show. You may not see a physical bong, but it's there. I think Bitcoin is about to deviate from the four-year cycle, to be honest. This is Aya the Beholder. You guys saw a sailor's uh, projection or prediction. He says we're in a 10-year bull run. So he thinks this bull run will continue for 10 years. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with that. Let's go. Let me know. Let me know. Don't be shy now. There's no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? The point is, if if you have the superior asset, it's going up forever, Laura. There you go. Let's go, warriors. Love the Jersey JV. Cheers, family. Thank you on that. H-bomb incoming. Let's go. Dropping a bitty bomb. Bomb bitty. Bomb bitty. Bomb bomb. Bong bitty. Bong. There you go. H-town holding it down. Shout out to H-town. Sailor knows. Uh, Matthias, Matthias, I appreciate the uh, gifting of the membership to Benny Avlis. You've just been hooked up. Uh, so please do thank him for hooking you guys up. Much love, much respect. Thank you for the support. Much appreciated. Uh, Devon, what it do? Biddies. That's what happened after the gold ETF. Bitcoin going to 77,000 by the halving past 100, 100 day of. Right on. But, but yes. Nine months after the rate cut will be the peak. We need the Bitcoin miners forever. The Bitcoin price needs to go up forever. 85000 on 420. Send it, Joe. Sailor is a Bitcoin noob. <laughs> no matter how much he has, he ain't no Max Kaiser. Preach. <laughs> no chance we have a 10-year bull run. Too tempting to sell at 500000 Spiritual bomb bitty bong hits to the moon. Honest banker. As long as it keeps going up, we're all winners. This is true. The trend will shall continue to rise. The party has officially started. Shout out to Dankness, keeping it dank on the stream. Bitcoin. <laughs> What's the second best? There is no second best. 10-year bull run, definitely, with all the inflows, retirement accounts, and other assets incoming for show. When gold companies are buying the Bitcoin, there is a new gold standard. What rate cut? I think Jerome and company will hold the line. Uh, we shall soon see. Tomorrow, we get the CPI. Nonsense, as I call it. I just don't believe any of the numbers. They could obviously fudge anything by changing the metrics around. 
which is precisely how they keep inflation at under 3%. You ever notice that? Just change the metric on how to calculate inflation and we can control the numbers. We may not be able to control inflation, but we'll control the numbers and pretend we have inflation under control. A. Shh, don't tell anyone now. Just got a freeze pipe bong. What? Love it. Cold, smooth hits. What do we call people that save in fiat? Man, we already went through this dankness. There's a name for them. There is a name for them. What do we call them? We call them poor. There you go. You already know. We're real in a wealth transfer, or will the wealth be more common? You know what's so special about them Hong Kong girls? Please tell me, Dirty. Why sell when Bitcoin is 500,000? That level of Bitcoin will be accepted as direct payment almost anywhere. This is true. You make a good point there as well. That's precisely what we call them. BS says one day, I'm saying I'm rich, next I'm broke, lucky for me. I love the roller coaster. <laughs> Living under a bridge. Oh boy. Uh, how long do you guys think it'll go after the halving? Any numbers? Yes, we have numbers. Uh, today's predictions, I got two for you. One is 150,000, another is 300,000 from some respectable analysts. So stick around. We'll be covering that here shortly. Insufficient funds, <laughs> mega billions, bullying the bunkers everywhere. It's not a bullish sign. Yeah. What up, JV? Grayscale is the wet blanket to our Lambo. Pretty much Ali Rizza. Give JV a like, fam. Much appreciated and unidentified him. Let's get it. Anyways, fam, pump the likes to pump the stream. And shout out to the Rumble fam as well. But let's dive into our next story of the day and dive into these Bitcoin ETFs, shall we? Bitcoin ETFs see a surprise 200 million outflow. Will the new 69,000 support hold? Well, again, this is the one-hour chart. Bitcoin did fall below 70,000 today as early excitement from the week close faded unfortunately however we're maintaining above 69,000 and that's a good sign the united states spot bitcoin etfs took in little capital and combined with a 300 million outflow from gbtc the day's net flows were heavily negative. And according to data from uh, Farside, net outflows totaled just over 200 million, uh, quoting analyst Mark Cullen. Surprisingly, even though Bitcoin pumped up yesterday, the ETF flows were significantly negative. One of the largest ever days we have had. Now, the two largest ETFs, which are BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust and Fidelity Investments, Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund, nonetheless avoided losses, maintaining an unbroken streak of inflows is outlined here by far side. You can see for April 8th there in the green. Market participants expected net inflows to improve after bankrupt crypto lender Genesis announced last week it had uh, completed its own multi-billion dollar offloading of GBTC shares, which it would in turn use to buy. I heard it was a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Now, overall, a very slow day for ETF flows, considering the price action, wrote Whale Panda, might be profit taking, although ETFs are usually held for the long term. U.S. tax day is the 15th. Don't know how much of that may play as a factor. Now, considering the short-term Bitcoin price action, traders look for signs of a reversal upwards. We had crypto trader Ed, who began the week with an 80,000 target, eyeing 73,000 as the first port of call for upwards. Continuation, let's see if we can break 63 here, uh, then we could have 80,000 next, according to the analysts. Bitcoin successfully retested the 2021 cycle high, but the bears are going for a second attempt of pushing the prices lower. Time to wait and see what today brings. Once price successfully holds above 71.4, new all-time highs. Our next, let me know if you agree or disagree with some of that, and quitting Credible Crypto, covered the move up to the highs that we are seeing now and covered the correction. After that, I expect to follow. Nothing has changed. So there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with some of that analysis. AJV, good morning. Shout out Luke Doggy Dog. Good to see you, bro. Lady Late. Shout out Barry BTC. Holland in the building. You will buy more. I love it. Stacking those pet rocks, family. Got to get them. Get them while they're hot. Get us back to 69,420. I have a feeling we'll be right back there in no time. Leonard, pump the likes, fam. 375 watching, only 113 likes. I got mine in and yours 100%. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Please give JV more than 200 likes that I give the next souvenir. Thank you, Mateus. I'll buy into the ground. It won't hit zero because I'll keep buying it. McFootnader, exactly. A lot of 
Bitcoiners will do the same. If it goes to 25,000, the cycle would be broken. Then we call Viat plus Bitcoin hodlers poor. <laughs> Uh, by the idea of freedom, says McFootnader. The book stops here. Bitcoin, my face, selling pressure in the second half of April as the supposedly bullish impact of the halving is already well entrenched. Arthur Hayes said in a blog post, source from Coindesk, shout out, Arthur Hayes just blaze. Smart man. He's a crypto billionaire. So he's also very bullish, clearly, on Bitcoin. We typically will cover his calls as well. So I appreciate you sharing that, family. Let's freaking go. Too many frogs and skin. Uh, this clown's trying to take us down. What a guy. Wow, what a guy. Wow, what a guy. Do, 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 do. Selling pressure just means to me to buy more. Precisely what we do. When the pressure's on, it's a hit. Pressure makes diamonds. Don't forget it. We need the pressure. Apply the pressure so we can supply the diamonds. The diamond hands, that is. So you already know. More diamond hands will be born with the more pressure put on us. So we welcome the pressure just like we welcome the volatility. Volatility equals opportunity. Volatility equals life force. Volatility means Bitcoin ain't nothing to F with. And just saying, protect your neck, kid. Shout out to the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> Wu-Tang is for the babies. People get so excited to interact with JV, they forget to hit the like I mean, that's a nice way to put it there, Marty. Everyone who forgets to smash the like is because they're, they're having a ball interacting with me. Thank you, Marty. I appreciate it. Very difficult to convince friends and family about Bitcoin, but keep trying. Here's the thing. Stop trying to convince anyone, right? They're not going to listen to you anyways. So who cares? Uh, focus on those who care, right? Those looking, at, looking for a way out of the matrix, show them. They deserve your time and energy. But if someone's happy in the matrix, they're complacent, supporting their oppressors, right? Let them be. No one's going to change their mind. You're definitely not going to change their mind. They're set in their own ways. It's like trying to convince somebody, right? Uh, it, it, don't, it just don't work. So stop trying to convince people. Something I discovered a long time ago. People are going to be people. If they want to act ignorant, let them act ignorant. Focus on those looking for a way out. BTFD, I could buy more with the selling pressure. That's why I do a podcast. I'll keep it 100. I could be in the flesh. Hey, friends and family, you got to buy Bitcoin. Shut up. Shut up, JV. You're just crazy. You're just lucky you got in early. Leave us poor fiat holders alone. Okay, so be it. So I'll just do a podcast every day. And those who come to the podcast and want to learn about Bitcoin and me preaching the Holy Gospel of Satoshi, bada boom, bada bing, win, win, right? You can lead a horse to water. You can't force them to drink the water. Hence, reality. Volatility is entertainment. Ain't no extra charge. Are you not entertained? Hello from Panama. Shout out Jose Pardo. Welcome, welcome. The combination made my funds bleed. You already know, Sammy G. BTFD, I would buy more with the selling pressure. Exactly. That's how we roll. I'd hit Gensler with my Benzler. <laughs> Epic. Very difficult to convince friends. Exactly. 100% JV. I told a lot of people about the biddies. They look at me like a deer in the headlights. Precisely. If you want to be rich, you have to act different than the sheeps. Exactly. It's the blind leading the blind. So stop being led by the blind leaders, aka the false prophets. All you need to do is show the percentage gains. That's another way. Now, obviously, if you get wealthy being in Bitcoin, your friends and family will probably listen to you because you have the wealth. People only listen to you when you're rich. That's just how it is. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> It's like we have no credibility until you're rich, and then people will finally start to listen. That's just how society is. That's why they listen to people like Elon Musk and other rich people, right? It's weird how it works, but that's how it is. JV, what are your thoughts on selling Bitcoin at the cycle peak and buying again when it drops? I think in theory, it's a beautiful theory, but trying to execute that could lead to wreck city. So you have to keep that in mind. Most of the people in crypto think they're smarter than the market and they will sell at the top and buy back at the bottom. Most of you guys will miss the top and miss the bottom and end up wrecked city and end up ish coining the next cycle to try to regain what you lost. That's what I've witnessed uh, personally from people that claim they're smarter than the markets. But in theory, it sounds great. And if it's your first cycle, that's probably more likely what you're going to try to do. And then you're going to get wrecked. And then next cycle, oh, I learned my lesson. I'm just going to huddle Bitcoin. 
Or you may turn into ishcoinery and say, oh my God, I lost everything. Now I got to get it all back. And my only hope is to ishcoin because what is 5X gains going to do for me now? I lost everything. Now I need the 10 million percent gains and you're going to ishcoin. That's typically what people do. JV Saludos from El uh, Cangarejo, Panama. Shout out, Panama. They aren't just acting ignorant. They're bin dun dun something. Bin dun bin dun dun. Whatever that word is. Double today, pump it up. You already know, Jeffrey. A lot of friends like frogs and boiling water. Preach. Or crabs in a bucket. People listen to you when it's too late. No, that, hence, they don't listen to you. That's why it's too late. True that. <laughs> People listen to me when I show them my hot wallets. They seem to only understand when they see the hard numbers. Exactly what I'm trying to say. Exactly what I'm trying to say. And it's, it's not our job to prove people anything. So that's why I say it's not worth convincing anyone. Bitcoin is down 3.6% around a former all-time high. Be smart. BTFD. Musk's son is a diamond mine owner. Interesting. You got to see the targets and sell. Raul Powell says he would have done way better if he didn't trade Bitcoin and just hodled. Well, there you go. True facts, JV. Preach. Cheers. I don't give a what. I talk about Bitcoin to people who never heard of it, and I could even save one person from the matrix. I will die happy person. More kudos to you, Jerry. You're a strong man. Respect. <laughs> I'm not built for that. Joel Folan, take the profit. I'd rather just be silent and be in peace. Uh, take the profit. There you go. Take the profit. I don't know about that. Will you take profits or hodl profits for the cycle? That's actually a good question. I know I'm a hodler for life, not trying to take any profits. You know what I mean? But anyways, nonetheless, teach their own. There is no right or wrong way to Bitcoin. That's the beauty of being in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like a honey badger. Bitcoin is the honey badger. It is the cyber hornet. Uh, it is the bull. What if you bought at the top of the last cycle as a noob and you're trying to time it this cycle? Bought the top of the noob. Like I said, if you bought the top as a noob last cycle, that's a good omen or indicator that you have no clue what you're doing and you're probably going to buy at the wrong time again. So just stack sats accordingly instead of trying to time the market. I take some profit here and there and put it into the sideline to buy them dips. We're in the 1%. You ever take profits, JV? Uh, no. I will take enough profit to fund living comfortable until the next cycle. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, I did buy this house with Bitcoin collateral. So, yeah, I mean, so I guess theoretically I have, but it was a very interesting situation. Well, I was pretty much forced to do so. Uh, long story short, but nonetheless, I, I tend to never take profit but at one point in my life, I needed to buy this house and I used my Bitcoin to do so. I was in a very precarious situation and I'll leave it at that. Never give up. We'll borrow against it. There you go. What's your use for Bitcoin then? Uh, store value, generational wealth. That's why I use it. That's what I use it for. For me, it's, I'm not trying to just flex on people and say, hey, look at this $800,000 know, watch. Hey guys, isn't that cool? check out this uh, $2 million Rari. Uh, don't get me wrong. That'd be a nice thing to do, but that's not why I'm in here. I'm in here for the generational wealth. I'm just trying to set my daughter up and the future generations to have freedom and sovereignty and not be enslaved uh, to the matrix. Simple. I'm a simpleton. Reality. Really, JV? That is awesome. Cheers, Devon. JV, you are a big help to a remarkable number of people. Much ups to you. Cheers, little germ. Just buy each week, day, and hodl. There you go. I'm betting on a Bitcoin power. I am in, what is that, 90% Bitcoin. Word up, toasty toast. That's how you get it done. Thanks for sharing, big, big ups. Big ups, family. I take a percentage of all that, and I buy the split between the hot wallets and the cold wallets. I won't sell any of my cold wallets and my hot wallets. Right on. Bitcoin will save you when you need it most, and Bitcoin we trust. Amen to that. And just like that, we're right back at 69 Gs, baby. Let's freaking go. So anyways, family, let's dive into our next story of the day. We discussed the ETFs. Now let's discuss this $5 trillion target from the Ripple CEO, uh, Brad Garlinghouse. Uh, the headline reads, Garlinghouse predicts institutional money pushes crypto market cap to $5 trillion this year in 2024, according to the latest report. That's right. Ripple chief executive Brad Garlinghouse thinks macro factors could double the overall crypto market cap by the end of the year. Garlinghouse told CNBC recently the regulatory momentum and the newly approved spot Bitcoin 
ETFs could drive a massive surge in crypto prices, quoting him here. I've been around this industry for a long time, and I have seen these trends come and go. I am very optimistic. I think the macro trends, the big picture things like the ETFs, they're driving for the first time real institutional money. You are seeing the drives, the, what drives demand, and at the same time, demand is increasing and supply is decreasing. That doesn't take an economics major to tell you what happens when supply contracts and demand expands. Numbers go up. Garlinghouse says the overall crypto market is easily predicted to double by the end of 2024. Let me know if you agree or disagree. The current market cap sits at 2.8 trillion, but was hovering at roughly 2.6 trillion when the CEO made his comments. So Garlinghouse predicts the US crypto sector will receive more regulatory clarity as well this year. As he shared in the interview, the US is still the largest economy in the world. And it is, unfortunately, it's been one of the more hostile crypto markets. And I think that is going to start to change. Also, so there you have it, a very modest uh, 5 trillion Bitcoin market cap, not Bitcoin, but crypto in general market cap. Again, we already eclipsed 3 trillion. That was back in November of 2021 when we hit the 69,000 all time high. Shout out to tech support. I greatly appreciate you subscribing to the number one daily Bitcoin pod respect. But anyways, fam, with a modest market cap of 5 trillion for this cycle, where do you see Bitcoin price going from there? Let me know. Uh, Mankey says, full disagree, it is going to triple. Now, I agree with that. I think double is very modest. I think we could potentially three, four, five X the market cap. We shall soon see. So if the total is three as the high, then I'm saying three, six, nine, 12. Yeah, like four X, a modest four X would be a 12 trillion market cap. I think that's more likely than a modest five trillion. Now, again, take what I say with a grain of salt. This is for entertainment purposes only, and this is not investment advice, but I can totally see a 10, 12 trillion market cap, easy peasy this cycle by 2025. Your thoughts, let me know. There is no secret formula, just DCA. Hence, that is the secret formula, Lens S. It sounds too easy, so most people won't believe it, but that's all we do. We dollar cost average and hodl around here. Assets over liabilities. There we go. Fiat is a debt note. That's all you need to know. Facts. I have heard many people buying homes with Bitcoin. Why not? If the, uh, I guess if the seller accepts Bitcoin, there you go. Also, there's now protocols in place where you could do that. I mean, I know some things exist. I've read some articles. So always sell it only if you need the funds for the expenses. If you're really silly enough to get a tax refund, be smart and put every penny of that check into Bitcoin, says Reddington Red. Redding Red, 388 online, only 143 likes. Do it up for JV. Uh, thank you, family. Appreciate it. DCA is okay, but buying it all low is better. Well, this is true. And in the long haul, that's all true for everyone. Because if you buy now, even at a top, say 70000 10 years from now, you'd be like, whoa, yeah, it was better to buy at 70,000 projected 10 years into the future versus DCA. So I see your point. Whatever the market cap, just be patient. Patience is key. JV is based as they get, especially for a YouTube content creator. Two for one says, buy the dip, let it rip. Skirt, skirt. I am a leg and asset man. Oh, word. A leg and asset man. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> what up, Mankey? Uh, hey, folks, Bitcoin has been teasing me today. Oh, for real? A little teasy tease. Loan against your Bitcoin. Never sell. There you go, Don. Bitcoin is 9% on top assets by market cap. We are on the way up, says Larry. Cheers. Uh, Mike, JV has the best pod. There is no second best. Yeah, I mean, cheers, Mike B. How do you get fiat to buy Bitcoin if you don't take profit ever? Well, something I did was borrow against it. I got, you know what I mean, a <laughs> significant amount of fiat using Bitcoin as collateral. But again, there's uh, consequences to when things don't work out accordingly. So you got to be very cautious borrowing against your Bitcoin. And right now it's probably harder to borrow against Bitcoin since some of those lenders no longer exist. But soon, I think the banks will all be accepting it because Bitcoin is pristine collateral. Realtors in the U.S. will open crypto wallets if needed. They don't accept gold, though. Ten years from now, I'll be, uh, be a passport bro in the Philippines living the life. Cheers to that, Diego. Cheers. Uh, 420, come and send it. Out of all the crypto streams I watch, this is by far the best. Much appreciated, Joe. 
Greatly appreciate that. Respect. But let's dive. Next story of the day. Let's discuss these bullish price predictions. The first one's 150,000 target. Then our final feature story, 300,000 prediction. But let's start with the modest 150 Gs, baby. And let's break it down. Welcome y'all just joining the stream. So with only 10 days left until the much awaited halving, Bitcoin is still trading above well, currently 69,000, a psychological level, and the previous all-time high back from uh, November of 2021. Bolstering bullish long-term price predictions from market analysts. Following the halving, Bitcoin price could appreciate over 160% to reach the cycle top of above 150 Gs, baby. According to research report by Bitfinex analysts shared here, using a straightforward regression model, we predict 160% post-halving price surge in the next 14 months, taking the price between 150 and 100 and $69,000 per coin. Now, Bitcoin fell 2.2% the last 24 hours to trade at 70,000. And again, we're just above 69,000 at the time of the live stream. Bitcoin is up over 7.5% on the weekly chart, according to coin market cap, as we can see here on the one month chart. However, analysts note that there is more built up selling pressure than in the previous cycles due to Bitcoin hitting a new all time high before the halving for the first time in crypto history. That's right. While this is a sign of confidence for the bulls, it could also introduce significant selling pressure as 1.87 million BTC or 9.5% of the circulating supply was bought above the 60,000 mark. Uh, quoting the analysts here, this underscores the active engagement of short-term hodlers at higher prices, reflecting evolving ownership dynamics amidst market activity and institutional influence through spot ETFs. Increased entity movements suggest a shift in the Cycle towards the gradual distribution of dormant supply and profit taking. However, Bitcoin prices can see a sharp decline during the halving period due to the Fed's quantitative tightening. In fact, Arthur Hayes, co-founder of BitMEX, wrote the following on his blog post yesterday. That is why I believe Bitcoin and crypto prices in general will slump around the halving. It will add propellant to a raging fire sale of crypto assets. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analysts. Now, the inflows from the US spot Bitcoin ETFs have been a significant part of the Bitcoin price rally. By February 15th, the Bitcoin ETFs accounted for 75% of new investments into Bitcoin as it surpassed the 50,000 level, according to CryptoQuant. And since their launch, the Bitcoin ETFs have amassed 841,900 Bitcoin worth almost $60 billion, representing 4.28% of the Bitcoin circulating supply. That's a lot of biddies. And with the accumulation pattern of the past two weeks, the Bitcoin ETFs are set to absorb 2.6% of the Bitcoin supply this year, according to Dune Analytics. Bitcoin ETFs have amassed over 500 million worth of net inflows last week, with a total of 286 million worth of daily net inflows April 8th during this week's first trading day, according to this data from Dune. So there you have it. What's your thoughts on a modest 160% price increase from the current price action, taking us to 150,000 per coin sometime this cycle peak? Let me know your thoughts on that. And I'll read some more of the comments before we dive into our featured story of the day. And check it out. We're just above 69,000. We're corrected roughly 2,600 on the day. Precisely the gains we witnessed yesterday was roughly $2,600, $2,700. So interesting. Yes, expect more volatility while we're at it. And the bank in Australia stated te started testing Chainlink. Oh, interesting. Integrating it into their system for cross-chain settlements to tokenize assets. I get bored at home and I like to train dogs. Jennifer's the bomb diggity. I sell my MicroStrategy, not my biddies. There you go. I think there'll be a sell the news event at the halving. You get your dry powder ready for it. Whatever happened to the Saudi family supposedly purchasing a huge amount of Bitcoin? Good question for Muhammad. Clue us in, Muhammad. I also take payments in Bitcoin, so I don't have to pay taxes on those payments. Word up, Jennifer. With the ETF's constant buying and demand 70x supply, no way to guess how high the Bitcoin will go. Good point there, Thomas. And uh, Bitcoin clearly has no top, as fiat has no bottom. We started from the bottom, now we hear. If Bitcoin is the standard collateral, Bitcoin will hit $1 billion. Uh, crypto News Alerts is the best. Who's the second best? Question for Sailor. <laughs> we got to be patient. The U.S. banks are working to offer Bitcoin ETS. Bitcoin is scarce. The price will react. Hoddle, says Larry. Cycle peak, most likely around 230000 But we'll be selling around eighty five, and we'll be way past the amount by the cycle peak. Just saying. There are only 15.4 million Bitcoin. Why? 3.6 million have been lost. 
And uh, where's my key? Where's my wallet? Plus two million yet to be mine. Good point, Greg. History will repeat with this ongoing pattern. People will swap back into cash at some point, says Tony Hilton. Cash is trash, though. I don't know. I don't know. Following Monday's breakout high of 72.7, Bitcoin retraced to Monday's advance and fell below Monday's low of 69,000. Word up, buck stops here. 150,000 sounds good for Texas two-step. My personal use case for Bitcoin is hodling. I'm sure the whole space will change in the future. Why can't you just want the numbers to go up? There you go. Max Kaiser just blurts out nonsense, and that's what happened to the Saudis. You think Max just make up nonsense? Come on now, Lerone Williams. Come on now. Uh, respect to Max. Max obviously is privy to certain information. He's very close to Bukele and works you know, in El Salvador, very close as his right-hand man when it comes to Bitcoin. So you bet your bottom dollar if Max announced Saudis or Qatar or whomever you know, adopting Bitcoin or whatever quotes he shares, he's not making them up out of thin air. There would, there would be no logical reason to do so. Uh, he's saying it because he's witnessed it and he's just revealing what he knows and you can take it for what it's worth. So, but to just say, hey, he's just making it up. I think that's pretty outrageous. I mean, Max has been telling us about Bitcoin since it was a dollar via the Kaiser report since 2011, right? So I respect him more than anyone else uh, in the space. And I truly mean that. Uh, but anyways, uh, Barry screams will be riches. What is that? Scrimes? Scrimes to riches? <laughs> what are scrimes? Uh, Max is Bitcoin Max. That's right. He's a Bitcoin Maxi. Cash is trash. Invest in Bitcoin, gold and cards and properties. There you go. Real assets. I like Max, but he gets a little over the top. I like that about him. I respect it. I, I look at Max's entertainment based. And I think we need that entertainment, right? Because not only does he keep it real and expose the bankers and the fraudsters, but he's entertaining as all hell. No one quite does it like how Max does it. Just saying. How many passionate Max rants that are priceless? We play some of them here on the channel. I just got to be careful. We're on YouTube. I'll play more of them on a uh, Rumble. It's about 7,500 sats for two dozen eggs. It's about 240,000 sats per hour for a dog training. That is one way I make my biddies. Whoa, you're making a quarter million sats per hour. Let's go. Anyways, family. No, I respect the opinion. So that's why I'm reading your comments out loud. So all good, Larone. I'm trying to stack sats for retirement first and hopefully generational wealth. It's still 69 Gs, baby. Just because you're crazy doesn't make you wrong. There you go, Greg. Good quote. Mad Max is a gangster. That's keeping it gangster. There you go, Don George. Real talk, Max is the Don. The Don Corleone of the microphone. For real. The Don Corleone of the BTC, yo. Bitcoin is uh, sticking to 69,000. Because who don't like 69? <laughs> but anyways, fam. Now for our feature story of the day. Let's discuss Bitcoin having less than 10 days away. Let's discuss this price target of $300,000 for this cycle peak. Let's break this baby down. According to the analyst, the headline reads, analyst cites favorable market trends that can see the Bitcoin price touch 300,000 per coin. This cycle, send it. That's right. Amid the renewed strength recently displayed by Bitcoin, we have crypto analyst Mikhail Vende Pop, a recognized crypto analyst and trader, offering an intriguing prediction for Bitcoin, highlighting that the crypto asset is likely to reach the $300,000 threshold this bull cycle. Send it. So over the past month, the price of Bitcoin has been consolidating and hasn't been able to sustain its rise beyond its new peak of 73000 However, things could soon be changing, according to Van Day Pop, expecting the coin to surge immensely in the short term. His forecast coincides with anticipation around the upcoming Bitcoin halving expected to take place in roughly 10 days, fueling optimism within the crypto community. And according to the expert, Bitcoin is still experiencing significant resistance Nonetheless, if Bitcoin manages to break out of this zone, the coin could witness a progression towards a new all-time high 
in the coming months, as outlined here in the chart. Uh, given that Bitcoin achieved the 70,000 price level ahead of the halving, Pop believes that it is likely to surge to unprecedented levels, particularly topping out at $300,000 per coin in this bull run. According to the tweet, uh, quoting him here, Bitcoin is still facing crucial resistance. If this breaks, then we'll be seeing a continuation towards new all-time highs. Bitcoin is 70,000 pre-halving, likely $300,000 this cycle. Can someone run the math? Is that roughly 4X, 400%-ish? Let me know. Now, Pop underscored that the price of Bitcoin returned to 70,000 level over the weekend, and as a result, has pointed out bullish indicators that are presently occurring in the crypto landscape. The analysts also noted the strength of the crypto markets have now exceeded our perceptions, and dips and alts represent opportunities for good entries. In addition, the Bitcoin price demonstrates the potential to reach a new all-time high. Pre-having and a shift in favor of altcoins is on the horizon. And again, as we pointed out earlier, for the first time in Bitcoin history, we finally eclipsed the previous cycle all-time high pre-having, which is another massively bullish indicator. So let me know your thoughts on this 300,000 uh, price prediction from crypto analyst Mikhail Van Day Pop. Do you think this is realistic? Do you think it's a pipe dream? Do you think it's modest? Do you think it's a possibility? Whatever your thoughts, holla in that live chat, and I greatly appreciate it. And I'll discuss my thoughts on it. I think 300,000 is right in the range where I can see it actually happening this cycle. Again, my bear scenario is 222,000 and my bull scenario is as high as 750,000, 300 being inside that range, 500 more of the medium average of that range, and 300 is more of the bear scenario. But nonetheless, I'd still be very satisfied regardless if we hit the bear scenario of 222 or if we hit the 750. Clearly, I'll be that much more excited to hit the higher range. But nonetheless, even the lower range is very intriguing, especially considering when I got into Bitcoin, it was $1,500 per coin back in 2017. So not too shabby. Those are pretty nice gains. And even from today's price action, I mean, a modest 300 grand is still roughly a 400% price increase from the current price action. And considering the institutional FOMO, which we didn't have previous cycle, and all the ETFs, of course, that are yet to even be launched, like we've been discussing, they're going to be launching from China via Hong Kong and all parts of the world, El Salvador. Then the institutional, uh, besides institution, we have the uh, nation state adoption, like countries like El Salvador and other countries that haven't made the announcement yet, who have been secretly buying and hoarding the biddies. And then, of course, we have sovereign wealth fund adoption. Then, of course, we can't forget the retail. The previous all-time high was driven purely from retail. So there are just so many bullish catalysts. Also, another thing we can't forget, we have the presidential election here in the States later this year, ironic enough. So all these things are going to play a factor. And more and more people are losing faith in their fiat currency and their central banking cartels. Yeah, I mean, running the countries amok and the money printing and them allegedly keeping inflation in control. Yeah, I mean, oh, we're going to keep it under 3%. It's not a concern. I don't think the average person or anyone who, you know, I mean, in the know actually believes anything coming out of their lips or mouths uh, anymore. And what's the perfect hedge against all the corruption? Bitcoin. What's the perfect hedge against the inflation? Bitcoin. What's the perfect hedge against the deflation? Bitcoin. What's the perfect hedge against uh, corruption in general? Bitcoin. What's the, you know I mean, uh, what do you do from here? You stack sats and you treat Bitcoin as a savings account because it's the ultimate savings and it's unconfiscatable. Every other form of asset can be taken from you, just like property, real estate, Ask Andrew Tate about that one. Uh, they can seize your vehicles. They can seize your gold bars. In fact, they've done that numerous times as history has shown us. They can virtually take anything away from you if they want to, if they have a desire to do so, except properly self-custodied Bitcoin. And for that reason alone, it's priceless. There'll never be another form of money with a finite limited supply that is unconfiscatable. Bitcoin was first. It has first mover's advantage. It has already reached the escape velocity. Nothing will ever catch up to it. It is what it is. Uh, Bitcoin has been going strong for 15 years. The network has never once went down. It is the strongest monetary network in the history of the world. It's the most appreciating asset in the history of the world. Uh, when you make a Bitcoin transaction, the, the, the transaction is the settlement of it in of itself. So Bitcoin can save these retailers billions of dollars, uh, retailers like Walmart, 
uh, any of these other, you know, physical places people go and shop, even places like Amazon, digital marketplaces, uh, Bitcoin can change the game, right? Because imagine the billions of dollars they would be saving uh, from not having to use the payment rails such as a Visa or MasterCard or something like that, right? And then they can pass the savings to the retail. Do you think retail, let's talk about the ladies for a second. If the ladies had the opportunity to save whatever it is, 2%, 5% by using Bitcoin as uh, instead of fiat currency, what do you think they would choose? Women love to save money. Just saying, who doesn't like to save money? So for example, you see something on sale, oh my God, it's on sale. I got to take advantage of it. Same concept with Bitcoin. What if you can buy what, whatever you're currently buying in your favorite marketplace, but they're going to pass on a 5% discount for using Bitcoin? That doesn't mean you need to use all your Bitcoin to buy things. That means you can have self custodied Bitcoin and then you can have some Bitcoin in a hot wallet on a phone. You can maybe keep a couple of hundred dollars on the hot wallet on your Bitcoin phone to make the transactions on whatever. You know what I mean? We're giving you some random examples. Amazon, you know what I mean? Walmart. I'm just saying, what if? And also, what if Jeff Bezos, uh, you know, announces being a Bitcoin, whatever, billionaire, hundred millionaire. Who is Mr. 100? Who is that? Is that a, is that a country secretly buying? Is that a Jeff Bezos, like a billionaire? Could it be Zuckerberg? Could it be Andrew Tate? A lot of questions, right? But the big, the bigger picture is there is such a finite limited supply of Bitcoin and there is mass demand, the supply being awarded to the miners about to get slashed in half from 900 a day to 450 per day. Just use your imagination. What's going to happen when there's a legitimate supply shock? We already witnessed a demand shock with these ETFs, right? What's going to happen when there's a supply shock and there's just no more to buy and the 2 million Bitcoin available on the exchanges are gone and all the Bitcoin is all of a sudden in the hands of the long-term hodlers such as you who refuse to sell. Well, they're going to have to bribe you with some higher fiat prices to even get you to entertain to sell your biddies, right? Stock to flow shows us Bitcoin hovering above 100,000 between the time of this halving, which is in roughly a week and a half, to the next halving of 2028 could foresee Bitcoin hitting a million dollars per coin. We have Kathy Wood. She made her predictions even more bullish, saying we can now hit 3.8 million per coin by the year 2030. But I want to know your thoughts. And even yesterday, I shared a Samson now, very bullish prediction of hitting a million dollars this year per Bitcoin. But let me know your thoughts. Where do you feel the Bitcoin price action is likely to go next? Holla at your boy. And now let's check out some of these comments. I'm going to read as many as I can out loud. Welcome to the Q&A session of the show. Hopefully you're enjoying today's stream. If you're doing so, smash the likes. It helps out tremendously with the algo. I appreciate it. Shout out Barack Monfils Evangelista. Welcome to the stream, big dog. Peter Schiff is Mr. 100. That'd be some shh, wouldn't it? I'm going to need a 300,000 Bitcoin so I can fill my truck's gas tank here in North Carolina. Precisely. If you don't have a Bitcoin valued at 300,000, how are you going to fill the gas tank? We're going to go back to traditional horsepower where the horses are pulling your cart. Hopefully, with the institutional support, Bitcoin will gain traction. Uh, and there is no profit. You're just using the Bitcoin and it has more purchasing power than the cash. So people treat it like some Ponzi precisely. Uh, boy, won't he be surprised when it hits 700,000. Let's go. Millie, send it. And of course, million is pro it's possible. Anything's possible. Because once you start to understand the fiat monopoly money scam, the tulip mania, the true tulip mania, you start to realize, wow, Bitcoin has no top because this tulip, tulip, Monopoly money has no bottom, right? You love horses, good. We're gonna get back to the horses, it seems. Powell is Mr. 100, J. Powell. What if it was Janet Yellen, Miss Binance? Binance, I'm Mr. 100. Hey, Guy JV, what to do, big dog? Shout out to the tip, Tyler. Some of the Bitcoin predictions seem far-fetched, but if Bitcoin hits and holds 700,000, I might freaking pass out. Well, let's all pass out together, shall we? Houses and dogs rule, or oh, horses. Oh, oh, of course, animals are rule. Animals for the win. I just want to wake up on a having day and see this ish fly up to the moon. Now, here's the thing, though, just keeping it real. Having day doesn't guarantee we soar. It just means after the having, sometime within 18 months from the having, we're going to hit a peak, right? So it doesn't mean instantly. So I don't want you guys to like have false expectations like, oh, having. 
and just looking at the price. Now, don't get me wrong. We're going to be looking at the price together. I'm going to be streaming on having day, right? But we may just be looking at the price like, please go up, please go up. And then it will probably pump when we're not watching it, right? Like when we go to bed or the following week or a few weeks out. That's just the nature of the beast. So just FYI, uh, what happened with the, uh, the ETF launch on January 11th, everyone anticipated a price pump and the opposite happened. And Jim Cramer was actually right. And they say even a broken clock is right twice per day, right? Because Jim Cramer said, it's a sell the news event. And we all said, F you Cramer, inverse this mofo. But lo and behold, short term, the market actually crashed. However, give it a few weeks, and we had all this momentum and all the, the inflows and look, all the volume and now collectively insane amount of volume, unprecedented levels, the most successful ETF launch in history, right? So it just goes to show you the market may react the opposite to what everyone's anticipating. So expect the unexpected. I got, I got to prepare you for that as well. We don't know. We may just pump on having day. But we may also dump, we may do nothing, uh, just the nature of the beast. But one thing's for sure, Bitcoin will continue to maintain the strongest purchasing power against the dollar because Bitcoin is the polar opposite. Unlike the dollar, you can't print more of it. So it maintains its value and gets stronger and stronger. And if you look at the history of the past decade, the purchasing power of Bitcoin, you'll understand. And then you look at the purchasing power of the dollar and you can see, oh my God, back then, maybe a house was 600 Bitcoin. And then eventually it was only 100 Bitcoin and eventually only 50 Bitcoin. And now maybe for 20 Bitcoin or 15 Bitcoin, you can buy a very nice house, right? Maybe even a million dollar house. And the opposite is true with fiat. Uh, what once you could have bought for a million dollars, you get a fraction of that today because the dollar is mathematically de guaranteed to decrease its purchasing power because they're going to continue to print because when you're in a $35 trillion deficit, you have no other option, right? Hence, they print more, money printer go, and Bitcoin go to the moon. Simple as that. We don't even need any TA to understand that. Can Bitcoin 10X its current price shortly after the halving? Can it? Yes. Will it? Probably not. You say shortly after the halving, I got to remind you, history has shown us we hit the cycle peak anywhere from 12 to 18 months after the halving, which would mean potentially quarter two of 2025. So again, I don't want to give false expectation vibes and say, yeah, two weeks after the halving, yeah, I mean, 200 grand. Can it happen? Yes. Will it happen? I don't know. Uh, I think most likely it's going to take a little bit of time. It's not going to be instant moves. However, take what I say with a grain of salt. I don't know. This is for entertainment purposes only, fam. After Ishcoin pumps, what will the real Ishcoins do? Bonk, Doshi, Pepe. After the little pump Ishcoin had to 70 Gs, it was the meme coins that pump. Still, I have set my alarm clock for 3 a.m. every morning so I don't miss out on the possibility of a rise. Respect, 19 likes, one more membership will be sent to one of you. Word, appreciate that. So I think Math Math is saying if we get 19 more likes, he's gonna gift another membership. So if you're watching and you wanna get hooked up with a free membership, smash the like. Uh, don't be shy. Make sure to sign in. Uh, that's probably why not everyone likes the stream. Half of you guys are probably watching and don't, or you're not signed in your YouTube account or you don't have an account. I encourage you to sign up and log into your account. So number one, you can interact. Number two, you can help support us by supporting us. You're supporting Bitcoin. And number three, you may get hooked up with a free membership. Just saying, if you're not a member in the chat, you will not get hooked up with a free membership. That's for sure. $1 per Satoshi. Now we're talking $1 per sat would send Bitcoin to $100 million per coin. Now we're talking. And it's the meme coins that dump the market. It's funny how that works. Smash the like. Thank you off the wall family. You're the man. GTSYDD. No ditty. Just saying. Oh. Gotta go, JV. Nice show. See you later. Uh, cheers, relaxing. Appreciate you tuned in. Shout out to the Rumble fam. Shortly, we'll be over there for the uncensored version of the pod. So looking forward to that as we do each and every day as well. Please hit the like, says Devon. Greatly appreciate you, Devon Short. Respect. Interact. Thank you, Craig, the space bomb. It's all about the interaction here. It's a live show. I mean, otherwise, I'll be talking to myself. Me and Nipsey will be doing a puppet show. I think Bitcoin will pump about two weeks after the halving. Right on. 
If it was up to the meme coins, would be regulated or banned outright. Does Nipsey have a membership? Of course, Nipsey is a Satoshi member. That's the top membership of the channel. It's $99 per month, just FYI. And there's a few other, you guys, uh, who are Satoshi members. So if you're a Satoshi member, respect. I don't expect everyone to have that level of commitment, though. I understand. I'd much rather see you uh, purchase some Bitcoin and put it in cold storage than send uh, me $99. However... <laughs> I respect anyone supporting the channel regardless. What's the Nipponator indicator today? Well, Nipsey just came back. Let's see. Nipponator, get over here. You're being called out live on the stream. Oh, there you go. Nipsey, we need an indicator. What kind of indicator are we going to get from you today, Nipster? What is it going to be? You can just look cute. If you just stay looking cute, that means we have a typical having event. If you're going to keep licking me, whoa. Now you're getting a little crazy. Multiple licks is going to indicate the ultimate buy signal. I'm just saying. If you get like five or six licks all in like one consecutive motion, that's a big deal. And right now we got three, so I don't know. So he's kind of, I don't know. I'm going to read some of your comments here. What can I do for Nipsey for a signal? Let me know. Later, relaxing. Cheers. What's the doge spelled backwards? No. Is it Elon? No. Could it be true? Doge spelled backwards, Elon. How do you get Elon out of Doge backwards? Doge backwards is E-G-O-D. So I don't get that one. So you got to clue me in there. Gary would make a great puppy. <laughs> he wants a treat. Well, the treats are downstairs. Uh, the channel gets supported by memberships. Does that sustain the channel okay? That's one of the many ways, honestly, maybe 10% of the income of the channel is through the memberships. Definitely helps out, but definitely not the core. Uh, it's really the, the the ads, the YouTube ads, uh, sponsors, and things of that nature. But I'm not very sponsor heavy, as you can tell. I rarely have sponsors uh, of the show. So it's mostly just YouTube ads and uh, memberships and tips. They all add up. So they all add up and they're all much appreciated three licks equals three good candles three green candles right on robbie p needs that membership yeah man <laughs> the channel gets supported so three likes only three need so yeah so nipsey it's up to you broski how many licks are we gonna get one two three i think three is the max today so that means he's Semi bullish, but more bullish for the long term. He's not giving us the ultimate buy signal right now, which we were hoping for. But hey, you can't force it. <laughs> you should have a sponsor too, bro. I know, theoretically, I could have every episode sponsored and collect a fat check. However, the, the reality, a lot of the sponsors are not worthy. And if I don't personally believe in them and use them, it's very difficult to convince JV to shill it. And that may be a, a gift and a curse. Uh, the curse is I could be making 20 times more money than I actually do if I actually, you know, put these sponsors on. But part of me is like, I don't feel good doing it because I refuse to pump meme coins. And 90% uh, of the sponsorship requests are uh, like meme coins or just all, pumping coins. Uh, and I refuse to just pump coins. Uh, I can make a lot of money doing it, but I, I feel bad because I think the majority of the people who buy the coins are going to get wrecked. So I just can't do it. And that's just me. Uh, I think many YouTubers don't have that problem, but uh, to each their own. However, you give me a legitimate exchange or something I would actually use, you know what I mean? Then it's a different ballgame. And I don't mind having them as a sponsor, but lo and behold, most of the sponsorship opportunities are going to be pumping new coins uh, because it's so profitable for these scammers to pump coins. And they're looking to basically tap into your audience to push the coins. And some of them may be legit. Don't get me wrong. But I don't want to find out. And that's part of the problem. I don't want to find out. Uh, thank you, Mateus. I greatly appreciate you gifting the membership. Expos John, you've just been hooked up. A uh, Welcome, Daniel Hall, uh, to the Hollow Gang. Respect, family. Admirable, says AI Apocalypse. Respect. You know what I mean? I just like to treat others as I would like to be treated myself, right? I guess it is now 
my visibility. That's right. Welcome all the new members. Much appreciated. What up, Kevin? Says hilarious. I've seen Nip's paws up a week ago. Pay attention. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Well said, JV. Integrity is everything. That's right, man. Respect to that. I was the 200th on the stream. You are welcome. Shout out, Ali G. Greatly appreciated, family. Let's get it. Thanks, JB, for the next good update. You're very welcome. Uh, respect. I'm going to be ending the stream here on the tube, and we're going to continue with the uncensored version of the pod on Rumble. Maybe Nipsey gives us the ultimate bias signal on Rumble. Maybe he just don't want to give it on YouTube. Maybe he knows he's censored here, right? You, you never know. <laughs> click on the ads. Don't skip. JB gets more money if you click on. Honestly, I don't I don't know if it works that way. I don't know if that's true, Don. So feel free to skip the ads. I honestly don't care. Like, you know what I mean, I'm not doing this for the ad money. I'm doing this to spread awareness. So I, I wouldn't wish anyone to be stuck watching ads. In fact, if you want to bypass the ads altogether, just buy a membership to YouTube. The premium membership, it goes directly to YouTube, but you never have to watch an ad. So, for example, if I have no sponsors on my show, that means I have an ad-free experience. If YouTube is showing you ads, that's because you're too cheap to buy the $10 <laughs> premium membership and never have to deal with YouTube ads. Now, if you like ads, maybe you're a marketer. Maybe you're just like, oh, let me see what kind of ads are working, you know? To each their own. Watch the ads. It's up to you. I, I never watch ads on YouTube because I've had a premium membership for like five years even on Rumble, I have the premium membership for $10 a month. I never have to watch any ads. So save time, save money. Time is money. You know what I mean? That's just my way of thinking about it. But to each their own. Sweet bro, you're a champion. Queensland in the building. Let's go Dub Nation. Thank you. You're welcome, Barry. What up, what up? Premium is the way to go. Facts, pump it up. Don't you know? Pump it up. You got to pump it up. Pump it up. Don't you know? Pump it up. Good to note, Adam. So he's basically saying I only get paid when people watch the ads. So be it. Yes. I'm still going to tell you to get a premium membership and bypass the ads because I don't mind. Um, I want you to have a better experience. I don't force people to watch ads. I don't want you to get that. You know what I mean? Because it's not what I'm doing here. I want you guys to get the information first and foremost. But if you don't mind watching the ads, so be it. It's your choice. you got to pump it up. Don't you know? But yeah, some of the streams I watch, they'll have like three sponsors in one show. It's like the beginning of the show. This show is brought to you by, you know what I mean? Two minutes later. And then they have, uh, you know, 10 minutes later, there's another sponsor. 20 minutes later, there's another sponsor. And it's like, wow, they're milking this. Interesting. Anyways, she loves that song. Amen. This is why I don't go premium. I always let the ads play through. Found that out years ago. Wow, Adam. Not many. I would imagine not many people like Adam. So Adam is specifically watching the ads to support the content creators. Whoa. Didn't expect that one. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Wow. Premium is the best, says Remy. What do you say to the second best crypto coin? There is no second best. There's a crypto asset called Bitcoin, right? You mean the second best loser? That would be Ethereum. Mute the ads like a boomer. There you go. Anyways, fam, let's continue with the uncensored version of the pod exclusively on Rumble. Head on over to Rumble right now. It's rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. Rumble link is always in the description. And again, Rumble is an uncensored free speech platform where I can rant and say a lot of the ish I wouldn't dare share here for obvious reasons. So anyways, head on over to Rumble, rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. And let's get ready to Rumble, shall we? Deuces. All right, YouTube fam, 